Today, we're going to tell you about the restrictions on home ownership and the things you can do to get around it. And we're going to talk to you about the most popular cities that foreigners tend to live in here in the Philippines and what the average one bedroom condo costs in those cities. So we're going to share with you a list of reasons why renting may have its advantages and also a list of reasons why uh, buying a property may have its advantages. We're going to talk to you about the cost of building a home in the Philippines. And Chrissy is buying a piece of land and she'll talk to you about what it costs to have her bunkhouse built and also what the average cost of building a province house is. You don't want to miss that. On Philippines Expats, one of the Facebook members asked, what is the cost per square meter for construction in the Philippines? You're going to want to hear what some of the expats had to say. Their actual experience in constructing a home and their actual costs are going to be discussed, as well as a few other things. And we're going to share with you two other vlogs where you, if you're interested in building a home one day in the Philippines, one in particular gives you very granular level details. He vlogged every day during a, a full year of construction. We're going to show you what those channels are. Stick around. Here we go. Today, it's all about home ownership in the Philippines. So which cities are most popular with expats? Well, number one is Makati. Makati, you're going to get your modern conveniences, high-rise living. You're going to avoid a lot of the noise pollution. The average price, average, for a one-bedroom apartment in Makati is going to run around 650 U.S. dollars. Number two, Tagatai, is known for its location and proximity to Manila and its elevation. I don't have the average monthly rent for a one-bedroom condo there. Dumaguete, you, if you're watching my channel, you probably watched a lot of vloggers from Dumaguete. You know more about Dumaguete than you should. It's just we know so much about it because it's a smaller town and expats like to go there. But the cost of a one-bedroom condo between $400 and $600 a month. BGC or Bonifacio Global City, technically part of Taguig, is going to run about... $750 to $900 for a one-bedroom apartment in a nice building. Subic Bay is also very popular with expats. I don't have a cost of a one-bedroom there. Palawan Island is very popular also to retire for expats. Very rugged province life. You have El Nido, you have Puerto Princesa, you have a lot of uh, Port Barton, you have a lot of access to nature. If you're a beach lover and you want to really feel like you ended up on an island in the Philippines, Palawan is really it. Cebu City, uh, almost a million population. Uh, expats love Cebu City because it's the major city that's not Manila. Uh, it's like New York City and Los Angeles. There's always a lot to love about Los Angeles until you really compare Los Angeles against maybe Seattle or other cities. But uh, Cebu City, the average cost of a one-bedroom apartment is 650 U.S. dollars. And Manila, which is uh, similar to uh, Taguig and BGC, but uh, it's going to cost around 550 to 590 U.S. dollars for a one-bedroom apartment. And Quezon City, which is where most of the population lives in Manila, almost 3 million people, you can get a one-bedroom apartment for as low as like 275 a month up to 590 So there's a big range there depending on how new and nice it is. And last on the list, Davao City. A nice one-bedroom apartment in Davao City is going to run approximately $600. U.S. Number one is you can vote with your feet. You have flexibility. If you end up with an aggressive neighbor, uh, if you end up that you rented and the quality of the home is uh, not sufficient to your needs, uh, a whole range of reasons. Uh, I, I spoke to an expat recently, and he moved every single year. Every home he rented, he didn't want to stay there after the lease was up. He moved. The ability to get away from a problem or to find something that will make you happier, uh, or if your economic situation changes, if something happens with your income and you need to downsize, or if you're fortunate and you inherit money, you want to upsize, you can immediately make that shift. So that flexibility, for me, that's that's really key. Until I'm 1,000% sure of what's going on, I would just rent, rent, rent. Way lower initial investment. So like
like this property, if you wanted to buy it, you're going to have to put down 125,000 US dollars for the land. You're going to probably pay 400,000 for the construction. And boy, that's a lot of cash to get into the property. I'm only having to put up my first month's rent. Now, the owner asked for two months deposit. I, I negotiated one month's deposit. So for essentially 100,000 pesos, I'm in. That's a way lower initial investment to utilize the property maintenance you know it's not my property if a tree falls on the house a typhoon comes along there's flooding uh something expensive goes wrong i'm only on the hook for three thousand pesos uh, another thing is cost predictability you know when you uh, decide to build a home you can go way over budget or there could be uh, very expensive I items that get damaged or break renting in this guard gated subdivision i get security i get a motorcycle uh um that drives around at night with lights looking at the neighborhood i get a swimming pool i don't have to take care of so there are other amenities that sometimes come along with rental properties uh, as a renter i don't have to worry about the laws too much you know there are curfews and there are other laws i have to follow but it's the landlord's responsibility to figure out all the regulatory issues and compliance issues that's not my job and, and i like it that way by not putting a lot of cash into a property, it allows me to diversify my investments. I can in take what assets I have and invest them in a very, very diverse set of investments. What, oftentimes, when people invest in a home, it, they put a, close to 100% of their inv investable assets in the home. And it's not a very diverse investment portfolio when all your eggs go into one basket. Now, let's talk about some of the advantages of buying a home versus renting. The home ownership is usually a very good long-term investment. Whereas rent, you know, people think you're just throwing your money away. You know, if you pay uh, 600,000 pesos for rent and the other person is owning the home and paying taxes and maintenance, if the value of the property goes up a million pesos, well, you can see obviously who's better off. Home ownership will protect you from inflation. Uh, a renter could see 10%, 15% rent increases as the landlord fights to keep up with inflation. And uh, while if you own the home, well, the, that's it. You just, you know, the taxes might go up, but not much else. So you're protected against inflation and rapid changes in the cost. Uh, when you own, you can customize it the way you want. You can paint it the way you want. You can add rooms on. You can add features. You know, the customization advantages are immense. And, uh, you know, I really miss the ability to customize as I choose when I rent. When you are a homeowner, you get tax incentives and tax advantages that are not available to you as a renter. When you own home, you get a sense of security and stability. You know, when you rent, you never know if the landlord is going to show up and want his house back and you find yourself, wow, where am I going to live? And even though I have a long-term lease now, uh, three months the first time, six months the second time, I'm in a one-year lease now. And now that I'm here a month, I would rent for a longer term. Uh, but, you know, I don't like that not knowing where I'm going to be a year or two from now if the landlord decides he wants to come and move back into the house. When you own, you get a better sense of cultural cultural integration. Your neighbors are homeowners, possibly. They will treat you like a fellow homeowner. You'll be entitled to join the HOA discussion groups. You'll be um, kind of welcomed as somebody who's invested in the neighborhood. We're going to talk about the cost of new construction in the Philippines. And Chrissy, they want to stick around because Chrissy's got some land and she's got some inside information on what it costs to build a small um, bungalow mm -hmm. and uh, what the land costs. So, how does it feel to be a land owner? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, because you haven't paid for it. Um, it's nice to feel like you're saving in something. You built a bunkhouse at your mother's. Yeah. How much did it cost to build that bunkhouse? It was like a 10 by 10 room with a tin roof. Uh, maybe 50,000 pesos. 50,000 pesos. Yeah, and your that's... your uh, your stepfather uh, is a contractor and, and he yes. built it. So you didn't really pay for labor. Would you say that's accurate? I did. You paid I a little? Did. Yeah. A little... So uh, currently uh, your parents are moving to a town um, about a half hour away mm -hmm. from Pagadian um, near your uncle and family members have started to buy pieces of your uncle's farm mm -hmm. and are building homes um your 
mother uh, is uh, already uh, has a house halfway built. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the construction, like cement floor. It's a cement floor, um, half cement in the walling, mm -hmm. and then it's like half cement, half wood, and then it's just small. It's as small as maybe a little bit bigger than my bunkhouse. So maybe like 12 by 12? Yes, I think. Yeah. And a cinder block up to maybe chest level, and then uh, wood. Yeah, like a plywood, but it's not a plywood. It's um, oh. The thicker one, though. Yeah, yeah, like a uh, fiber board. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I think they use and it. it's going to have a tin roof, correct? Yeah, it's a okay. tin roof. What about the CR? What about the bathroom? How do they handle that? Um, they, are, they are already building a CR connected to the house. Okay. So they dig a septic tank? Yeah, they okay. dig. Okay. And um, you bought two lots. Um, how big are the lots you bought? It's uh, 300 square meters. Each or both? both together okay so 150 and 150 mm -hmm. and can you share with us uh you got a special deal from your uncle but what are you paying for those the, the 150 square meter lots um 75,000 pesos for each, each of okay. the 150 right and you're paying for that over like two years yeah i'll be paying over for two years but 30, uh yeah. you've already put a dent in the deposit and the yeah. price uh and you've just heard that uh, your uncle says you can start to plant on the vacant land before yeah. you're fully paid. Yeah, just to so, so that the the piece of land will be cleaned and someone should have a should clean it regularly. So to do that, you have to plant something, make it a garden, you know. Yeah. So if you were to build a house on that land, what do you think it would cost to build like a two bedroom? cement complete you know not uh, uh cement up to your chest but a real uh cement house with a real roof and a yeah, real bathroom kitchen a real concrete house. real concrete house yeah. what do you think it would cost you with my stepfather helping me um more or less 250,000 pesos so like 4500 dollars mm -hmm. wow is that because you're getting like a lot of real uh, inexpensive labor? Yes. If you had to pay like a contractor, would it be double? Maybe ten thousand pesos. Yes, I think. Yeah. Okay. And if you had, if you installed an air conditioner and, yeah, the and you AC and you um, and the hot shower, maybe yeah. So I mean, yeah, like if it's just a single bedroom and then with the dining, it could could um, be less. Hmm. But if you had to furnish it and have hot and cold running water in the yeah. house and have uh, um, a real roof and air yeah. con and you had an air con unit, mm -hmm. you'd be looking more at what? If, with a contractor, if you didn't yeah. have uh, family. 500,000 pesos. At minimum 10,000. Yeah. But maybe more if you had bought an air con unit and you outfitted the kitchen and yeah. bought a couch. Well, yeah, 500,000 pesos alone. Just for the, the house. house yeah. Alone, yeah. yeah. Without aircon, I think. Without the furniture, without the aircon. Yeah. You know, you will, you will design the house for, for having an AC, for having a hot shower, because you cannot have hot shower in a in a bathroom that is not designed for it. So, yeah. it it's um costly right. compared to costly. just yeah yeah it's compared to like Filipino type bathroom. Mm, mm. And. Um, so how big would you build the house if you have two lots adjoining 150 square meters each? So maybe 3,000 square feet of space. Yeah. So what do you think the dimensions would be of the building? I'm not sure because you cannot build a house really exactly as the same size of the lot because you need a... You need a Walk around. Yeah. yeah. Around. Yeah. Space. So it could be smaller. So they just put a road in. What is it about this property that drew you? Oh. Other than other than your family members started to buy land there, mm -hmm. um, the road there is now um, on the on ongoing construction. Yeah, yeah, of the road, ongoing construction, and you can find a resort and um, yeah, uh, commercial commercial properties there. And this is ahead. about a half hour from your hometown of Pagadian. Yes, yeah, half hour. Okay. 
Well, we're going to talk some more about building and construction costs in the Philippines. And thank you for being our special guest. Yeah, special. <laughs> A lot of people are going to have strong opinions and feel free to comment below. You are not allowed to own land in the Philippines. However, as a foreigner, you can execute a 50-year lease and then have a 25-year option or extension and build a home on leased land. You can also buy a condominium here in the Philippines if over 60% of the condominium is owned by Filipinos. 40% can be sold off to foreigners. It has to be on leased land, the condominium. You can also form a corporation and have 40% ownership. There is also a law in the Philippines. It's, I don't have the actual law name, but if a Filipino leases you his land and then uh, you build a house, a luxury home on it, and then he suffers financial hardship and he can make a case to the court that he would be homeless and he would have to live in the street if he can't return to his ancestral lands and live uh, in a in a bunkhouse, uh, then he can reclaim the land from you. I read a Facebook uh, group where uh, people talked about this law. One a Westerner said, no, he... He uh, had a really good lawyer, and they had an airtight contract. And sure enough, the old guy that he leased the land from died. And the children of the man tried to execute that exception to the law and have him thrown off the land and take possession of a gorgeous custom home that he had built. And it went all the way to the high courts here in the Philippines, and he said he won the case. So I don't have any personal knowledge of it, but it is something to consider. So what most Western men would probably do is they would purchase the land outright in their Filipinas uh, name. Now, here in the Philippines, a lot of Filipinas are still married, and that can create complications about putting land in her name. But what you would probably want to do is buy the land in your Filipinas name and simultaneously execute a 50-year lease so that uh, you have the rights to use the property and she would be the landholder she would own the land outright you would simultaneously execute the lease on the land now there are a lot of expats here who do buy land for their filipinas um you know after they've been married for a number of years after they've lived together for a number of years they don't want to leave her with nothing when they're gone and they just go ahead and buy the land sometimes just outright in her name I don't know personally each individual's experience, but when you hear uh, what people have to say on the Facebook groups, there are many, many men who claim that they bought their Filipinas land or their wife's land and they lost it all in the divorce. So one thing you can do is you can execute a um, a lease simultaneously with buying the Filipino the land. It wouldn't make sense to lease the land from someone else and then you pass away and her family only owns the land for 50 years during the lease. So, um, And also, uh, I've heard when you do form a foreign corporation, lawyers can structure it in a way where there are... Um, own other attorneys who own like two and a half percent of the property, but they don't have full voting rights so that uh, you get to be the managing partner with only 40 percent. Uh, you're the one who can decide how the land is used, even though you own 40 percent. There can be some clever ways to make the f corporate ownership work as well. In terms of the condos, I've heard repeatedly that the quality of those condos is uh, really poor and the uh, investment value can be really, really poor as well. So a lot of expats are not too keen on those. Um, and that brings us to the cost of construction. Um, I've rented three homes since I've been in the Philippines, and I've rented a, a dozen Airbnbs. And the quality of construction really, really varies. Uh, the first home we lived in, uh, if the toilet backed up and you used a plunger, uh, it was connected to the drain in the shower. And I don't want to get too graphic, but uh, you would want to close your eyes and not see what came out the shower drain. Uh, the second house, it was in a nice gated subdivision, and uh, it had a uh, foreign, one of the owners was a foreigner 
and the kitchen was really nice and up to Western standards. But a lot of the other construction in the house really wasn't. Uh, it's common here in the Philippines not to have hot water under the sinks, and it's also common not to have exhaust fans in the bathroom. So they'll have a, an overhang or an eave at the roof, and uh, the bathroom windows will have a screen, and the windows will remain open at all times. No air conditioning in the bathroom uh, and no ventilation per se, other than a window. The quality of construction and the quality of materials can vary widely. You can have uh, good appliances here. You can have quality ceramics and uh, masonry materials, and you can get very, very good labor, construction quality labor, if you manage it carefully. Now, let me state, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not a home builder, and I've never actually built a home here in the Philippines. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I did own a real estate brokerage in Scottsdale, Arizona. I know a little bit more than the average person when it comes to remodeling and construction and home building and uh, buying land for homes. One of the things in uh, Scottsdale that we always told buyers is if you're going to buy a a hundred thousand dollar piece of land, you need to spend at least uh, two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars on the actual home. You don't want to be proportionally out of whack. Typically, a ratio of one to three or one to four would be consistent with the normal practices. We did a house tour, and we're renting a home here in a beautiful subdivision. Only about thirty percent of the homes, if that, are already here or under construction. Uh, there are lots for sale. Uh, I don't know the specific price, but my guess is they're around. 100,000 U.S. dollars to 150,000 U.S. dollars, depending if they have views and the placement within the subdivision. And then the homes, when completed, are probably selling for 400 to 600,000, depending on how grand they are, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, and the view that they might have. Elsewhere in the Philippines, you can buy a piece of land for maybe 1,200 to $2,000, a very small piece of land, 150 square meters. For those who don't use the metric system, one square meter equals uh, 10.8 square feet. So 150 square meters. What is 150 square meters in square feet? 150 square meters is about 1,610 square feet. So a lot, a building lot, it would be 150 square meters. And that's what typical province Filipinos would purchase. And you can have neighbors with zero lot lines. They will build right up to your lot line. Quite often you'll have a, a lot line, a solid cement wall going up all three stories on the lot line on one side of the house so that your neighbor can build right up and have a zero lot line. On Philippine Expats, a uh, Facebook group with over 45,000 members. And Robert asks, what's the average cost per square meter Again, one square meter equals 10.8 square feet building a home. I will be employing my own labor and doing the supervision and co of the construction. Well, Brian writes 20,000 to 40,000 pesos, depending on finishing and labor costs. A bit hard for one man to do everything, so I am assuming you will hire helpers. Anderson writes, I have just built one high-end, good quality, 35,000 per square meter, but in two years, the land price has doubled. Kevin says, that is what we are doing. One half basement of 85 square meters, main floor of 125 square meters, and second floor of 125 square meters. The architect projection was 158,672 US dollars before inflation. Today, I estimate 200,000 to 220,000, but we are in Baguio where costs are high. Alfred says, 10 years ago, our house, 37,000 per square meter. They usually have three standards and ours is the middle. James says they will use your tools, your electricity, your water, and they don't go home. On weekends, they will sleep on site and ask for a cash advance to buy booze and food. James says, well, that's everywhere. Daniel says, well, why don't Filipino construction workers not live at home? John writes, you got one little problem. It's against the law for you to do work on it. Hmm. Well, I've seen a lot of guys be their general contractors. Maybe they're not supposed to do the, their own work. Todd writes, can anyone say train wreck about to happen? The norm with projects here, your builder that you start with is never the one you finish with. He says, 
He's been involved with real estate development for 20 years here. Nothing but problems and issues. Plan on a cost overrun of one third to one half of the quoted budget. Acting as your own general contractor brings its own problems. Unless you understand and can do every job on the site. And if you push the workers, they will just quit the job. He says he had a meeting today about a 1.5 million US dollar plus house. The first thing from the owner he said the first general contractor took 10 million pesos and walked away. Todd says the problem is that people give contractors too large of deposits and they do not set specific timelines and understand the building methodology. Robert says, first, choose your site carefully. Second, traditional hollow block is the cheapest. And third, simplicity is low cost. Fourth, how big is your budget? All depends. Rusty says 25000 per square meter. Raymond says, I've just completed almost a new two-story house of 175 square meters. It is finished to a good standard at a cost of 34000 per square meter. I did save on the electrical work as I did that myself. I also fitted all the doors in the frame. Garland says, the electrical work is the most expensive part of the build, where the locals fail at consistently, so I applaud you. Jason says, 20 to 40,000 sounds about right. If you look at the concrete log homes around Tagate, those are 40,000. Jeff says, whatever your estimate, double it if you want a nice home. Aaron says, if you're not paying labor, around 20000 for mid-tier finish. Prices of construction materials have skyrocketed during COVID and have not recovered. Rick says, mine cost about 30000 per square meter back in 2006. Anderson says, I've just built one high-end, good quality, 35000 per square meter, but in two years, the land price has doubled. So um, that'll give you a broad brush idea of what the construction costs are. Again, it depends on the quality of the construction. Let's be practical here for just one minute, because there's a lot of people watching this who are going, this is crazy, you're out of your mind to buy property there. Don't do it. Well, and there are some points to be made. You know, if you have a Filipina with a very large family and her uncles and her brothers uh, decide to get aggressive with you or the neighbors decide to get aggressive with you or the politicians in the area decide to get aggressive with you, how are you going to defend yourself? Uh, you know, if people show up at your door and tell you to get out of the house, it belongs to the Filipina and you're not welcome. Are you willing to hunker down and bar the doors, call the police, get the justice system involved and think that you will win? Might you be involved in an accident? Might you get into an altercation? May you feel that your personal safety is at risk? Is it worth it? You have to take that into account because um, I've heard stories where people have... Uh, you know, leased a property and started a restaurant and bar. And after a year, when it became a booming success, they came back to open up the restaurant one day and it was uh, lock and key. The, the landlord said, no, the lease is uh, terminated. He violated the lease and he frustrated. Uh, he couldn't open his business. And next thing you knew, there, another restaurant, uh, a new sign went up. Somebody else, a Filipino uh, pretty much uh, had all his equipment and opened up the restaurant in that place. And now what is he going to do? He can turn to the courts. He can turn to the legal system. But if the person who, you know, committed this crime, uh, the landlord or the other people who opened this restaurant, if they have a lot of connections and a lot of sway in town, and it's a smaller town, you might be hard pressed to get justice. So even if you have a contract, you have to think twice about your personal safety and the type of aggravation you might face. And you could have a very aggravating time dealing with contractors and suppliers. They take a half down or one third prepayment and they never deliver. And you're a foreigner and now you're trying to get the contract enforced. You know, we moved recently and it looks like we're going to lose our deposit because the landlord at our last house decided to keep our money, even though they told us when before we left and did an inspection and told us everything was fine. Uh, they've come up with a bunch of mysterious uh, problems that they say we have to pay for just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's not enough money to get yourself uh, worked up about. You don't want to have a heart attack dealing with construction. You know, there, in America, when I owned my real estate brokerage, I always told people, 
Uh, the number three reason for divorce is remodeling. When you have contractors in your house and you have to move out of the master bedroom and they're working on your master bath and you have money issues, now it costs twice as much. And, you know, boy, oh boy, couples fight. People get in arguments and marriages dissolve. And, uh, you know, your relationship with your Filipina, she'll be ecstatic that she's going to get a house. So she's probably not going to give you too much trouble. But the type of aggravation you could deal with. So I promised you earlier that I would share uh, a YouTube vlogger. There's actually two and many, many more you may be familiar with. If you were thinking about building a house in the Philippines, I would highly advise you check out some of the other YouTube vloggers and they do vlogs where they gradually build a home here in the Philippines and they share with you their challenges and their successes. Uh, a real popular young guy from Iceland named Finn Snow, many of you may be familiar with, he's just completing construction on a house uh, outside of Dumaguete. You know, building a really nice modern contemporary house. He hired an architect and he has a construction manager. He's close enough where he can come and check on the property and uh, you can watch, uh, he does weekly up Updates. But the guy that I really would recommend is Texas Filipino. Here's a guy, he's uh, around 60-ish, and he owns a farm in Texas. He owns a few rental properties. He can do cement work. He's very. He's the kind of guy who, if you're going to take on construction, if you're going to be the general contractor yourself, um, he's the kind of guy you want to watch. And he would make a video in the morning and often in the afternoon. He had one or two of his wife's relatives on the construction crew, and he poured his concrete to a very, very high standard. Uh, he mixed it all by hand. The guys used shovels to mix the concrete. They did not get a concrete mixer. They carried it up by buckets, but he micromanaged that project, and he had to point out to the workers every little thing that they do that's not right. And he had enough knowledge in building homes and being really handy, fixing tractors, that kind of guy, um, and managing uh, some rental homes that he had invested in. I'm not sure what his career was, but every single day, and he built a really nice house um, on the beach, not too far from Iloilo. You might want to check that channel out. If you're thinking about building a house and you want to be your own general contractor, Getting good quality construction crews and labor is going to be a huge challenge. If they're not supervised hour by hour, if you're not living... Now, this Texas Filipino guy, what he did is he built a garage, and he moved a lot of his tools from America in there, and he was able to lock up a car. So the only thing on his lot initially was a garage, and a, he, could, he put a kitchen in there even, and he kind of had everything in the garage, and he built around the garage. The house got built up around the garage. And uh, so he was able to lock everything up and keep everything secure. But boy, um, you know, things will walk off the job site. People will uh, do uh, unsafe practices. You're at risk of people falling and, and being electrocuted. The way they wire, the way they weld, the way they mix concrete, the way they handle the drainage, you need to be there every step of the way or you could have a project that you're gonna have problems later on. So